Hello, thanks for uh, watching this video with us today. We're here to tell you about a new Scots language CPD course that we've written in partnership for training teachers on how to use Scots language in the classroom today. My name is Bruce Janssen. I'm Scots language coordinator at Education Scotland. And my name is Sylvia Warnecke. I'm the associate head of school of languages and applied linguistics at the Open University in Scotland. I'm going to tell you all about our new course that we've written as part of our ongoing collaboration between our two organisations uh, with the aim of embedding the Scots language policy launched by the Scottish Government in Education Scotland in 2015 and this particular collaboration has a focus on training teachers on using Scots in the classroom. Right, so Sylvia, um, why did we create a CPD course such as this and, and what is it? Yes, so this uh, professional learning course is designed for teachers teaching any subject at any level in a Scottish school context. And this course upskills teachers in incorporating teaching Scots language and culture in their classroom. The course will be recognised by the General Teaching Council for Scotland with its GTCS Professional Recognition Award. Yeah, and we've uh, definitely created this uh, based on the need and the demand for, for high quality training materials specifically for teachers to improve and develop their skills and their knowledge of Scots language teaching approaches um, that they can use in this multilingual uh, Scottish classroom that is very much part of teaching today in Scotland. Uh, so it's been a it's been a request from, from stakeholders for generations to have uh, training materials such as this available. The idea for this course actually derived from a massive open online course we developed together that was launched in 2019. This is an open course and has since been accessed by over 40,000 people from across the world. And this online delivery model was something we wanted to replicate in this CPD. But Bruce, what do the teachers actually learn in the CPD course? Well, teachers who sign up to study with us and to study this course uh, will learn about educational guidance and academic research as well as best practice uh, teaching Scots uh, language and culture in Scottish schools. They'll learn how to incorporate elements of Scots language and culture into their own teaching and being given the opportunities to practice this in their classrooms. It's a very hands-on course. They'll learn how to take an interdisciplinary approach uh, to teaching Scots language and culture. They'll understand the value of Scots language skills and the skills that their pupils bring to their education as key transferable literacy skills that form an important part of their identity. They'll also learn about the SQA awards, one plus two, Scots across the broad general education, and how, how all the educational benefits that pupils can gain from studying Scots in the classroom, as well as planning a progression across the school experience. And although the course is an online course, there is a lot of interactivity built in. So teachers will engage with each other through forum activities, share ideas for lessons. They will have live tutorials with tutors and they will do activities around their assessment that are designed for applying what they learn directly in the classroom and then reflecting about the experiences of the application. Yeah, that's an important part, isn't it? Um, that, uh, that they get a chance to, to get some input to read uh, academic papers then published, to hear some input from ourselves, and then get the chance to try that in the classroom, see how they get on, and then have a safe space to share that with other uh, students of the course. So we, we hope that it'll be a very safe space with a real community feel for teachers to, to feel safe and to feel confident to experiment and to try new things and report back on how they got on and carry on progressing as they go. Exactly, and that is something we have learned from an initiative of the Open University, which is a primary languages programme. And we have found that one of the greatest benefits for teachers is that they can share lesson ideas and feel 
handheld and supported by colleagues in a safe space to develop their skills together. The course, because it is delivered fully online, allows us to uh, deliver it very flexibly in terms of giving teachers enough time to deal with the study content as well as the assessment. And it allows us to make it very accessible because it can be studied from anywhere. Teachers can do it in the school, from home, even on the move. Mm -hmm. And then we've uh, created a course content and a structure that is uh, applicable to, to any teacher, uh, no matter what their background. And we've created a, a progression through the course that takes you through all the various challenges and explores all the educational benefits that, that comes with using Scots mm -hmm. in the classroom. And we start right at the very beginning in Unit 1, the role and use of Scots language in Scotland. Um, it's very much an introduction to Scots in the classroom. Uh, so even those with very little prior experience you might never have delivered a lesson for, we get you started and all on the same page at the same place from, from the word go. And the important thing about Unit 1 is we ask teachers to do an assessment of their school environment and see what role Scots already plays there, what challenges there might be for delivering Scots. And we have found this is a very good starting point to see where everyone is at mm -hmm. with their Scots teaching. Yeah, and uh, with that in mind, then teachers don't need to worry oh, my school might be behind some of the others, or I might not be as far on as some of the other students on the course. No, we use Unit 1 to get everyone on the same page mm -hmm. before we get into the, the real meat in Unit 2. Yes, and Unit 2 looks at Scots exploring the educational benefits and really looking at Scots as a skill set people bring to their school education and um, you know look at their linguistic repertoire which Scots adds a lot to. Yeah and across the course we're going to be looking at all sorts of interdisciplinary learning and ways that Scots use in a variety of different ways but we certainly have a focus in that second unit on literacy because it's quite often it is going to come back to reading, writing, listening, talking. Uh, we, we really get going on and those key aspects of learning in that unit before, before we move on to unit three and we start to look at uh, Scots across the broad general education. And um, here I think it's important to really give that early years and uh, those nursery years um, focus because early years and first level, early first primary school years are a really important time for a child's uh, language development and their literacy development. And it's great to, to focus on that for a unit. Yes. And then we move on to unit four, and that looks at Scots in social studies in secondary school. So that's the first unit that addresses directly the context of secondary. And as you can see with social sciences, social studies, it already encapsulates a number of different subjects. All of which very applicable to areas of primary school as well. Geography, looking at the landscape, words that Scots has for different aspects of the landscape and the weather and describing the world around us. History, modern studies, so many other subjects. So whilst moving into uh, some of the secondary aspects there, still taking that broad general education and um, looking at the different subjects and ways that Scots can fit in there. Yes, and what we have learned from doing the pilot is that teachers said this unit gives us a lot of materials we can take and use in the classroom and giving us ideas of how we can develop our own materials as well. And developing uh, their own materials is a big part of what we want teachers to explore with learners. And that's a big focus in Unit 5, Scots in Literature and Creative Writing. So not only looking at how Scots has been used by writers of the past, right up to writers of the present day, but also what do those future writers have to say? The bairns who are in the classrooms just now, um, writing in Scots, uh, and two important aspects of that, looking at Scots, um, writing in Scots for those who already speak the language, mm -hmm. and then writing in Scots for those who are learning the language. Because we really need to embrace the, the multilingual 
uh, aspect of the modern Scottish classroom. And uh, this course can't just be teaching uh, bands who already speak Scots. It has to be for classrooms who has a mix or for classrooms with an interest where uh, they don't have skills in Scots. Yeah. And this course is directed for, for the meeting the needs of all those. And continuing the theme of literacy, what is important here is that we build pupils' confidence in developing their own writing style in the language. And then moving on to Unit 6, we invited um, the artist, actress and poet Gerda Stevenson to write this unit for us. And she wrote about her own poetry, how she writes in Scots, about the writing process and her main focus is also in this unit looking at uh, famous Scottish women from history and showcasing how she then used these as themes for her poetry. And this links back very nicely to Unit 4, looking at Scottish history and uh, bringing lots of cultural aspects into the course for the teachers. Yeah, it was fantastic having Gerda work and she gave us so much exclusive use to the poetry, to her voice, made various recordings that people can listen to, can play in the classroom, all the sort of background work that she did when researching and writing quines exploring the history of all these important, sometimes forgotten yeah. uh, figures, uh, female figures in Scottish history. And uh, that unit, you know, really is a chance to explore the expressive arts, to look at creativity. And, and Gerda sets that up incredibly well in a, in a really inspiring way. Yeah. And, um, and then we have the, the final unit of the course, which is Scots as a language learning option in schools, learning all about standardization, dialect diversity, the impact of multilingual classroom practices and how this can improve pupils' attainment and inclusion, which was a real theme coming out of the pilot, was how much Scots can impact both attainment and inclusion and in creating that atmosphere in the classroom. Um, something we should say here, Sylvia, units one and seven are the only mandatory units, yeah. but uh, the students uh, who take the course, the teachers, have an option to, to choose uh, out of those middle five, the four that they are most interested in. So that way you can personalize it to meet your needs of uh, being a primary practitioner versus a secondary practitioner. You, you may wish to, uh, if you're a secondary teacher, not do the uh, unit looking with a focus at early years yeah. and nursery. Or if you are a nursery teacher, you may wish to uh, uh, skip one of the units that's uh, slightly more secondary focused, but it's created in that way to have as much flexibility to meet the needs of anybody taking the course. And to add to that, uh, we had a teacher in the pilot who comes from the additional support needs area of the curriculum. And uh, that was very interesting because we realized we needed to add a pathway through the course for that particular group of teachers as well. And coming back to the content of Unit 7, something Unit 7 addresses is also this big debate about is Scots a language or not? And what makes a language a language? And that was very important to finish off on because it really builds teachers' confidence in teaching the language. So Sylvia, something that people who are interested in doing the course will uh, wonder about is how we assess the work and uh, what sort of uh, material they'll be asked to provide if they are going to take this course. Yeah, so for us it was important that uh, the course brings as much value as possible to teachers' career development. That's why we're adding the General Teaching Council for Scotland Professional Recognition Award to this course, which teachers can complete. All assessment is formative and it revolves around this idea of the reflective practitioner. So the assessment focuses on your reflections about your practice together with the other students on the course. The course is at master's level and there are six assessment tasks and you have to provide or you have to write a short blog post for each of these assessment tasks. There's also joint forum work for the reflection and this is looking at the application of your new skills in the classroom together. There are reflective prompts that help you with writing your blog posts 
And we have a self-evaluation wheel, which we would like you to look at before you start your study and come back to in Unit 7 when you're completing your study on the course. And importantly, this course and its assessment align with the national model for professional learning that uh, the General Teaching Council is very keen on for all teachers to work with. We've already mentioned the pilot uh, we ran of this course and Bruce, how did the pilot actually work? Well, um, uh, it took uh, shape when we were contacted by the staff at Banff Academy who requested the opportunity to train multiple members of their staff uh, using this CPD course, which uh, was music to our ears because it meant we could get a variety of teachers from various different subjects. We had English teachers, mm -hmm. Geography, Modern Studies, RMPS, uh, History, Music, ASN, uh, meant we were able to take this way further than maybe that traditional space where Scots might just be in English class and we were able to get teachers trained using it in all these different kinds of ways, which was really exciting and beneficial for us. Um, the tutorials were online and with ourselves as the tutors, then the teachers posted online. Uh, as Sylvia was just saying in the last class, there's a forum where they can post uh, their discussion on how they are progressing, ask each other questions, give feedback to each other. Um, each unit requires the teacher to plan, prepare, deliver, and then reflect on a lesson um, with their, their class, which has a, a Scots focus uh, linking to the theme of the unit. So after hearing what we've said about all the different units, you can imagine how many different lessons we saw written and trialed as part of this pilot. Um, and along the way, teachers also read academic papers. As we've been discussing, it's important that this course be a master's level course where they read and respond to published papers that look at Scots in the classroom and the, the areas of uh, key educational importance uh, around Scots. And as well as the teachers reflecting on their learning, uh, the group discussions often created opportunities for them to give time and attention to the wider issues, both positive mm -hmm. and negative, relating to Scots language, um, not only in, in education, but also in, in Scottish culture today, um, with some very interesting themes emerging from that, Sylvia. And one important point to mention here as well, it was important for us to find out whether the workload in this course would be manageable for teachers. So this course is planned to take up 40 study hours and this includes teachers trying out their new skills in the classroom and reflecting about this. And now we're moving on to giving you some insights from what we've learned from the pilot. And uh, we have identified five themes that came out of the feedback we, re we received from the teachers. Theme one is looking at Scots as an asset, as a significant element of pupils' linguistic repertoire, a skill set, and something that is important for their sense of identity. The second theme is st standardization of Scots and the debates around legitimacy versus authenticity of the use of Scots. The third theme is Scots as a tool for inclusive education. The fourth is Scots as a driver for cross-curricular approaches in education. And the fifth is looking at Scots empowering pupils, but also teachers in education. Right, so how about we look at some quotes, Sylvia, that teachers posted during the pilot, just to give people a bit of an idea for what sort of work people, the teachers who studied with us, uh, what they were writing and what they were thinking about. Yeah, so Bruce already mentioned an important aspect is engagement with research that has been done about teaching Scots in classrooms. And one of the participants said Lowing's article published in 2017 
made me realize that a person who speaks Scots and standard English can be considered bilingual and therefore faces the same challenges and opportunities as other bilingual students. Another, uh, another teacher uh, wrote uh, some of the interesting piece that having discussions about different languages and comparing lexis or grammatical structures helps students improve their metalinguistic skills and increases their knowledge of how language works. Now, the emphasis was very much on making sure that pupils should be allowed to use all their linguistic resources, no matter what language, for them to develop and achieve, also referred to as translanguaging. Another teacher said, if Scots is seen as a lower form of expression that should not be used in school, the classroom is not an inclusive place. Language is linked with cultural identity and the increased self-esteem generated by bilingual learning can support educational achievement. And that follows the article by Cummins, 1996, this teacher engaged with. And another teacher wrote that it's essential to make sure that EAL pupils, so English as additional language pupils, are never made to feel ashamed of their L1, their first language or mother tongue. And speakers of sh Scots should be considered the same. Mm -hmm. It's a very key theme uh, for this course. And this uh, change will not be easy uh, and, the need, and needs the support of teachers, Education Scotland, the SQA, all the senior leadership teams involved in a school environment for this to be successful. We all know Scots is quite a controversially debated subject, especially, especially Scots in education. And much of the recognition of Scots hinges on its standardization. And teachers discuss the pros and cons of standardization in their feedback. Bruce, what have they said? Well, we've got loads of uh, really interesting comments. Uh, the teachers really gave it a lot of time and reflection. Uh, an interesting quote here that I'll read just now. An aspect of learning from the course I found particularly challenging is the concept of a standardized Scots. My initial concerns with standardized Scots are that it could lead to being exclusionary. A standard Scots could encourage the motion to keep it as an academic study and not a living language, which is very much considering the data gathered from census results. From my own experience, Teaching and using Scots in a classroom environment, pupils have shown enthusiasm in getting to write in their own voice, but became disheartened and even apologetic if some of the words in their dialect or their voice is absent from a Scots dictionary. Yeah. On the other hand, another teacher said, standardization may be the answer to some challenges that exist in Scots language. A standard Scots would go a long way to offer legitimacy to it. It may become easier to engage with and learn Scots and gain confidence when reading and writing. With set and specific rules, it would also give way to teachers who are not proficient in Scots having a crutch of sorts to support them. It's an important point, isn't yeah. it? And what we found time and again when we were doing these tutorials, we often got a very personal response. And this uh, quote from this teacher starts on that note, from a personal perspective, as someone who is not a fluent Doric speaker, because the school in Banff is Doric speaking parents, the uh, teacher said, someone who's not a fluent Doric speaker and would be more confident and familiar with West Central Scots, there were challenges to overcome with dialect and my own ingrained biases concerning mm -hmm. Scots and English. During this course, I've been able to acknowledge these challenges and make changes to my practice. And more importantly, I feel, work collaboratively with colleagues to develop and explore Scots in school. And something interesting that came out of the pilot was that debates around using Scots in school went way beyond the school itself. And here is an example of that. One teacher said, in conversations with parents and members of the community, they're overwhelmingly supportive of Scots being taught in schools. Many have spoken about how this will help their children feel included and also to help keep what they perceive 
as declining Scots-speaking population revitalised. A really important finding from the pilot for us and the teachers was how much using Scots in the classroom empowers pupils as well as teachers. And Bruce has an example for us about that. Yes, more quotes from the reflective learning that um, teachers wrote. Uh, a good point here is, an important reason to have Scots in schools is to make our classrooms inclusive. Also, another teacher says, if the learning approach puts the power in the hands of pupils to tell the teacher what is correct in terms of Scots, the teacher's role can become one more of offering support with the context of the lesson. And it changes the dynamics in the classroom and, and blurs the boundaries between teacher and pupil. Yeah, no, it's exciting to see, to see how many teachers embrace that uh, in the pilot and we'll be excited to see more of that when, when the course is live. Yeah. Um, and on that theme of things that maybe we weren't expecting, we have this quote from a teacher that begins, the most surprising thing about the course was the amount of discussion it's created amongst colleagues and people outside of the school. Mm -hmm. um, being able to do the course with colleagues in the school helped me greatly as I could learn a lot from others' experiences and allowed me to consider things I never would have thought of. It also led to a lot of discussion outside the school and I never understood how contentious an issue teaching Scots was till I started this course. <laughs> and on the theme of Scots being a contentious issue, um, it very much affects people's attitudes towards the language and education. And one teacher says, above all, however, my inspiration mainly lies in changing attitudes when using Scots. Building the perception of Scots as an asset giving children and young people the validation to express themselves using the language in whatever capacity they, they see fit. Some of the comments that uh, we were most taken with, Sylvia, when we were seeing all this coursework coming in over the, the months that we did the pilot was, how often comments said that the bairns really responded in the class and it either gave them a boost in confidence, renewed their focus, mm -hmm. encouraged reluctant learners, just gave something new. And yeah, we've got a series of quotes here yeah. on that sort of theme, haven't we? Yes, one teacher said, allowing the pupils to be involved in the design of the content and of the lessons is the roadmap to younger generations latching onto Scots and taking that forward with them in life. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, there was um, the unit that Gerda Stevenson wrote was very popular. And this teacher wrote this comment that Gerda Stevenson's nonchalant attitude to code switching and bilingualism in relation to her writing is the outlook we should be promoting, accepting both languages or many languages mm -hmm. in their own right. And it was encouraging that Gerda Stevenson uses Scots dictionaries and thesauruses when writing. I feel my vocabulary is quite limited, but it was reassuring and that even more proficient users of Scots also need support. Yeah. Coming back to this aspect that Scots language doesn't come without the culture that relates to it. Uh, one teacher said the awareness of Scots language should not just be about learning the words and expressions, but putting them in a local context. It is very important, therefore, to engage bairns in discussions about language and dialect, their place within them and the wider language community. And to go full, full circle back to the comment we started on with the confidence of the bairns in the classroom, this teacher wrote, it's fascinating to observe the impact on confidence and how this format, uh, how in this format, young people will often complete tasks to a very high standard compared with extended writing pieces where perhaps they feel uncomfortable using Scots in a formal setting. We got that time and again yeah. that uh, whether it was taking advantage of new technology, different ways to create pieces of writing, different ways to express yourselves, that uh, Scots was, was a really uh, uh, empowering vehicle to, to bridge the gap between learners and 
and the teacher and where we want them to go in terms of expressing themselves. Yeah, and teachers reported that it took a bit of work for them to convince the children that uh, using Scots is allowed. But once that message had come across, the motivation of pupils to engage with the language was astonishing. We have shared a lot of positive insights from our pilot and you might think, uh, was everything plain sailing? We did realise teachers do face challenges when using Scots in the classroom. The positive news about this is that they said the course helped them overcome these and, and taught them new ways of approaching these challenges. I'll give you a list of some of the challenges teachers have mentioned. One is fitting Scots into the curriculum they're teaching or not having their own Scots class, or not having enough time of incorporating Scots. Another one which you will have identified already, the teachers being worried about speaking the wrong dialect of the language. Then we have the need for having to overcome pupils, parents, school management's bias against Scots language um, was another challenge teachers mentioned. Sometimes then the lack of support from management that comes with it, the lack of teaching resources, a societal bias, and importantly, something which our uh, research, which we incorporated in the course, helped overcome was the lack of knowledge of indigenous language learning pedagogy. And there's a final word Bruce has for us, and that's in Scots. Yeah, well, uh, as you can imagine, the, the teachers were very inspired and, and did begin to post their uh, blog responses written in Scots. So I'm going to give, uh, give Doric a go here. And this final word from, from one of our teachers was, I would like to take a muckle role in going for it with leadership of Scots learning, both in terms of guiding and encouraging my ex excellent colleagues at this school, but as well as helping to ease up provision over the arts and parts of Scotland and add to the literature about Don. This course has been an excellent opportunity to beg mere confidence in Jan and gain me the space to think about the muckle picture as well as my own classroom. Do you have any questions for us? That's right. Uh, final slide will show our email addresses. So uh, we would love to hear from you if you have either any questions about the course or want to register your interest. My uh, name is Bruce Jensen and my email is on the screen. And, and my name is Sylvia Vanica and that email address will be shown on screen as well. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.